Coming up today on Locked On at Texas Tech, Grant McCaslin is the captain now. You are Locked On Texas Tech, your daily podcast on the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're going to start this thing off right. Raiders! Everything runs through love. Great to be with you on Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network. Always appreciate being your first listen on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts. He's the only Chris Level. I'm Casey Cowan, and we have now, as Texas Tech fans, been formally introduced to your new head men's basketball coach. Got a lot to get into today, Chris. We'll hear some sound from head coach Grant McCaslin, also from athletics director Kirby Hocutt, but I know you, like me, and so many other Red Raider fans out there were probably just finally breathing a sigh of relief that you get to this big bullet point on the timeline of trying to regain your footing as a program. You get to this big spot on the timeline, which may not be the biggest, by the way, uh, but you got to get here before you can get to the others. So was glad to get it out of the way, and we'll get into some of the sound from Coach McCaslin, but uh, really enjoyed hearing his perspectives on a lot of different things, Chris, and seemed like uh, he prepared comments or was prepared to deliver comments that heavily involved personal relationships. That was kind of a big thing, at least from what I heard and and took away yesterday, Chris, that it's all got to start uh, one-on-one between two individuals, and obviously we'll branch from there. But I really enjoyed that part of it because I think so often you do kind of get into the rah-rah pump the fan base up, let's quote-unquote win a press conference, whatever that looks like. I didn't quite get that vibe from Coach McCaslin. I I got a very uh, personally invested kind of vibe from Coach McCaslin. And for the most part, that was scratching me right where I itched, Chris. (laughs) (laughs) What were some of your takeaways and and what you heard yesterday? You you know, I I think uh, there, there there was two, I guess, things that that he said that I think stuck out more than than anything else. I think the first thing was, you know, they they joked about, you know, he he has been in in West Texas. That's that's how I've known Grant for such a long time, and that he he kind of started off at at Tech, but then it was at Odessa and um, and then at Midwestern State and, and all those things. So he's he's done the junior college basketball thing, which is where I, I played at that level for a couple of years, and it, it's it's some back roads. Uh, I talked to a couple of other junior college coaches, as a matter of fact, yesterday, and they're like, yeah, I'm. I, I got like 1,500 people in, in, you know, the the town where I coach at. And, you know, we, we know it like Steve Green and, and Level Land, Texas. I mean, it's not exactly – these aren't exactly thriving metropolis. So I, I bring all that to, up to say when you're coaching – I mean, Odessa, like college, is a big – that's a big city for, for a lot of these junior colleges compared to, to others. So – he, he mentions, you know, look, we love West Texas. And when I landed last Friday, um, you know, people are like, hey, sorry about the the wind and, you know, whatever. And he's like, you know, this is I, I wouldn't have recognized this place otherwise. So I, I, I think he, he, he yeah, he embraces that for what it is, loves the people, understands the that the wind's going to blow a little bit. The wind doesn't just blow here. I think that's just the way that everybody else tells the story. <laughs> but the other thing that he said, I thought, and this may be along the lines of, I may save this, uh, my thought, um, you know, as it relates to recruiting and kind of what kind of player fits here. Because there's two things that he said yeah. that really, really stuck out. And I don't I don't want to spoil the clip, so I don't know if okay. it's in there or not. Yeah, we'll, we'll get but yeah, we'll get we'll, to that point. We'll get to that so coming those, up. Those were the kinds of things that I think. I think, but you're you're right. It's uh, he's uh, he's definitely a relationship guy. I think he's definitely um, has a, has a theme for kind of what he wants his program to be, and um, and and it fits in with kind of playing hard for me, playing hard for each other, all those things. But it should fit in well in this part of the state. Yeah, I would think so. And I really can't think of uh, anything more fitting or more so what the doctor ordered possibly uh, for a roster that's either got some guys remaining or whatever newcomers, but specifically those guys remaining than to really invest in a personal relationship uh, first and foremost to to gain some trust because, uh, you know, for whatever reason it might have been, uh, you would think that there would probably be some of that lost, I guess, as you go through a very frustrating year like what you did 
a season ago. Before we get to Grant McCaslin, however, I want to start with Kirby Hocutt because over the last few weeks, Chris, I mean, this has been the biggest part of this conversation, the waiting game. And as Tom Petty told us, that is the hardest freaking part. I think that's how that song went. Um, and I don't know that anybody really was all that confused why we were waiting. Maybe you tolerated it okay. Maybe you really hated it, and you were telling us that in the YouTube comments or whatever. But here's the perspective from the guy that was, I guess, eventually making the call and, and submitting that recommendation to President Skuvenik, the guy that uh, obviously was there in the mix from beginning to end, that being Kirby Hocutt on the timeline in hiring Grant McCaslin. Here is Kirby. I would have been disappointed had he wanted anything but that. You know, you, you want a coach that's all in with his – his players and within his locker room. And that was extremely uh, important to Grant to finish the journey with the North Texas team. And honestly, I would have been disappointed if uh, it would have been any other way. So while, you know, it uh, was probably the worst kept secret in all of college basketball there at the end of the search, uh, it was the right thing to do. And, um, you know, it was fun watching him coach his teams and uh, the success that they eventually had. So was happy for him and was, uh, proud of um, the process that we went through and and the men again that I had around me assisting and helping we arrived at the unanimous decision to recommend to President Skuvenek that this is the right man to lead Texas Tech basketball. Yeah Chris and I think when you're in a situation like this and you're talking about a coach who's not only still engaged in a tournament but is winning games why would you want a guy that's like Oh, another job? All right, see you later. <laughs> I'm out. It's almost like one of the first steps, I guess, in the interviewing process, uh, possibly, was, was how you would respond to that. And I, I guess he responded in the right way. I, I still don't think people grasp uh, how unusual this kind of thing is or how impressive it is to compartmentalize. Like, th There's just so many people in this profession that wouldn't have been able to <clears throat> start working on the next journey and putting pieces in place and trying to serve two masters and and it, and and the the your your current master would have just not been able to to you know understand that you're focused on them and all those things i just like it, it it's very impressive that he was able to keep his teams attention and 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 that they were i mean it, it sounds like north texas is a very mature team too that they're not like kind of like because you know all this stuff was on social media everybody i mean you you heard the athletic director right there kirby hocutt saying worst kept secret i mean everybody knew what was going on for the last couple of weeks it was just you're kind of waiting for the finality when is their next game gonna you know or their last game gonna be and once they won on Tuesday night, you knew it was going to be Thursday night. But anyway, here here we are, and now we're well into the to the next week. Uh, but I just I just think it it says a lot about the relationships he had with those kids that they would uh, they would play so hard and and beat beat a team uh, like UAB that was pretty good, beat a team like Wisconsin out of the Big Ten that was pretty good, and cut down uh, cut down the nets there in Vegas. Uh, so I, I, again, I just think that that uh, is extremely impressive, but yeah, this has been a, it feel like this has dragged on for a long time, man. I mean, long, long time. <laughs> Handle it, I guess, about as well as you could yeah. on, on either front, either the tech front or the McCaslin front. Uh, we'll get to coach McCaslin talking about, um, what he's learned from tech players so far, any familiarity with them prior to his arrival. And then as Chris alluded to, uh, what he's looking for on the recruiting trail, but, uh, and we'll also include obviously what players there, uh, were there at the introductory press conference. But I was also interested, Chris, before we move away from this to see, um, what North Texas representatives, I guess, might've been at the introductory press conference. And I, I know at least two of his three assistants or two of his, uh, support staff members were, um, in the mix yesterday, I, I have no idea what that means for what role they could be here at Texas Tech, but uh, Matt Brower or Brewer, and here we go. We should have a stiff drink for this one. <clears throat> a choky Mokobu. Mokobu. Uh, also, in yeah. <laughs> did I miss anybody else? And, and did you take that to mean anything? Uh, yeah, I, I, t I take it to mean a, a, a lot in that. I think it's, yeah, Matty B is what, uh, you know, Coach McCaslin referred to him, Matt Brower, and then uh, Coach AC. 
uh, or Chokey, I think is what he's known as. But I think those guys are actually going to be uh, the, the the heavy rumor. I mean, from from the coaching industries, those guys are going to be like full fledged assistant coaches. So uh, that that's what uh, like on the road assistant coaches. Uh, and I say on the road because um, I, I talk to. I like two or three people reach out to me like, hey, I think these guys are assistant coaches. They've called me about players. Uh, like, and so I'm like, well, yeah, then that that's uh, you know, so I, I think I think that that is what the way that is pointing. I think that that would leave if that that is true, then you've got the, those are two of your three assistants. I think the other one really, I think, unless somebody tells me differently, I think that points to Ben McCollum, but until it's done or whatever, and I don't know what specific roles anybody's going to have here and i'm just i'm going off of uh, reading the tea leaves with 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 a lot of this stuff because you you fill out a variety of of roles on your staff and sometimes sometimes this stuff plays out well into may and june before you kind of I, I think the artificial deadline is whenever first session of summer school starts you you, you want to have your, your full staff in place because you, at that point, you can start practicing and doing some different things as a team. So you really want to have uh, your, your full staff, if you can, in place by that point. But th- that's that's two months away. Uh, you know, and, and you could have it done much sooner. But anyway, that's – and I know a lot of people are interested in staff and all that. I, I, I will tell you that uh, I, I heard nothing but uh, impressive things about AC and Matt Brower. They are, uh, you know, because last year I think it was a criticism that you could say, man, your 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 coaches are are older. You've got an older staff. I mean, are, you know, is that and and now it's going to tilt toward younger. But I, I will tell you that, uh, like specifically about Matt Brower, the two guys that uh, call me are like, oh okay, god, the guy is extremely thorough. He he will watch every single thing he can when he's evaluating a player. And he may shy away from getting a flashy player that has a ton of stats that even is interested in coming to play for them if there's not the toughness level, you know, component there. And so, you know, he, he's just – he he's recruiting fit. I think uh, AC has, like, had this kind of four-year, you know, rise in, in the industry. And so he's kind of been – but, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you, everybody told me about Matt Brower. Eventually he will be a head coach sooner than later you know, at some level. And, and I think uh, AC is somebody, and, and it appears that coach McCaslin, he wants people around him that he trusts, you know, and like his people. And so he's, he's yeah. kind of gone on this journey in the last several years with these two guys uh, specifically, but I don't know who else will be, be added. And I know everybody is, is curious about that. I mean, you've got video coordinator, strength coach, another assistant, you've got those in between roles of, uh, you know, assistant to the head coach or, you know what, what, whatever. There's a variety of different titles, but the, but the, there there are six to ten more additions at some level uh, that are key roles in a basketball program that you still need to make, even if you have have added these two. And you're you're for sure adding uh, Brower and uh, and AC to the staff. So what that looks like, you don't, I'm not real sure. You don't want to take a crack at at the last name. You're just going to stick with AC. I'm going. I'm going with like what and everybody told me. They're like they call him. They call him AC or Chokey, you know. And so okay. I'm, that's what I'm going with because that's what everybody all said right, to me. Right, and I'm enough. like, I, I'm just not gonna. Yeah, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> hey, remind me before we move on with the addition. You've got two actual assistant additions with the changes to the staff, or I I can't remember exactly how that was spelled out. Are you going to have five assistant coaches or what was no, the change? So, so you have, you, you can hire three on the road assistant coaches right now. Like okay. that's the way every college staff works. You have a head coach and three assistants, or you have, you know, and you can name them associate head coaches and all that stuff. But basically the head coach and those three guys, and the difference is the reason that they get paid more is because they're allowed to go on the road and go recruiting in the summer and, and all those things that those four guys are gotcha. and the head coach is limited to how many times he can go see certain kids or whatever it is. So, but it, it's, it's the fourth and the fifth spot that, that will be allowed to be on the floor and coaching uh, at some point soon. We, we may be a year or, or months away from that being passed. They'll be on the floor, be on the floor, allowed to coach. And then also they can recruit while on your campus. 
and like be very involved there with phone calls and hosting and all those things. They just can't get on the road and go see a prospect if that makes sense. So, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, anyway, that's gotcha. That's, okay. Let's get to some of the guys that were sitting in the front and second row there, Chris, because we were all anticipating what players may or may not uh, be in attendance for the introductory press conference. And I, I don't know if you want to read, uh, you know, a ton into it or, or nothing into it, but either way, uh, the guys we saw were, were Kyron Lindsay, Lamar Washington, Kerwin Walton, Demorion Williams, CJ Williams, um, Daniel Bacho, Jalen Tyson, and Pop Isaacs, I think, is the full list of those guys that were uh, present there. Um, Davion Harmon, somebody on Twitter is like wondering, where's Davion Harmon? He actually responded, said he was getting, I think, his wisdom teeth pulled or something. So he was on the good medication and was not at the introductory press conference. Take that to be whatever you want it to mean. But uh, were you surprised or, or anything about uh, the guys that we saw show up? But first, today's episode brought to you by Built Bar. If you're looking for a delicious treat but don't want all the fat and calories, then you gotta try Built. Maybe you're getting that beach bod ready for the summer, and Built is your answer because with Built, healthy is actually tasty. So delicious, you're not gonna think they're good for you. What makes them so good? For starters, all covered in 100% real chocolate. Great flavors like peanut butter, brownie, cocoa nut, almond, churro. I'm not sure how Built does it, but those bars taste like candy bars while maintaining amazing macros. What's even better, they're healthy. Only 130 calories and 4 grams of sugar with a whopping 17 grams of protein. And now you don't have to wait around to get a box. Now you can head on over to Built.com or get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club. That's right. Head to your nearest Walmart or Sam's Club today and walk to the pharmacy section. Grab yourself a box of Built bars. You can pick up a four-bar box a cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puffs. If you're close to Sam's Club, run in and grab a 13-bar box with hit flavors, brownie batter, Oro Chiro. You can thank me later after you try your first Built Bar. Were you surprised or, or anything about uh, the guys that we saw show up? Yeah, well, I mean, I, to me, it was a, it, it was always going to be about who wasn't there, I guess, if, if, if that makes mm. sense. Um, you know, Elijah Fisher wasn't there that's uh you know not a good sign if you're if you're trying to keep him and maybe they aren't uh Robert Jennings wasn't there which surprised me uh but I I'm told that he kind of had indicated to coach McCaslin hey I can't be there I'm in Mississippi not on a visit or anything like a college visit or whatever I think he's just seeing family maybe is what I gather but I think uh he, he was just kind of out of town but but coach McCaslin was aware of it and, and okay with it and all those things uh, KJ Allen was not there. Doesn't surprise me. Fardoz wasn't there, which doesn't surprise me. So really, as I looked at it, <clears throat> yeah, without knowing any of the details, it was Harmon, it was Jennings, and it was Fisher that I'm like, okay, this is this is notable. And so you kind of have explanations on on two of the three, but uh, with Fisher, I mean, he may in fact be uh, be headed elsewhere. So. I don't know. And I know that Robert Jennings has got a, uh, a visit set up with Virginia here pretty quick. Uh, so I, I, I don't know. Um, and it doesn't mean just because you were there at the press conference that you're going to be on this roster and, and all those right. things going forward either. But um, at least that was the uh, the the intent uh, that you're showing yeah. support of your new head coach. Take it more as of a positive than a negative, but obviously it's not uh, definitive, I don't guess, in, in anything as it relates – to the immediate future. Let's take a listen to uh, Coach McCaslin uh, talking about his visits with uh, current Tech players so far and what he has heard uh, from Red Raiders who were on the roster a year ago. The biggest thing I heard is they want to win. I mean, I think the expectation of the community and the expectation of the program and and where where we have it is there's an expectation of win and that they wanted to get back to 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 winning and playing in March. Um, but they were also very complimentary on moving forward and how we can do it. I mean, I think that was the, the positive part to it is there's a lot of hope in the locker room and, and excitement. Yeah, I mean, you know, being ninth place in this league with the amount of resources dumped into this program, it, it wasn't something that anybody was okay with, especially when you when you come off of a, a Sweet 16 appearance where – 
your roster looks a certain way and, and you kind of have a, a blueprint of how you, how you want it to, to be. And so, um, you know, I, I think that, yeah, that that's, you know, and, and people talk about, Hey, pace of play, you know, he wasn't really asked about that uh, yesterday with coach McCaslin, like the, the kind of the grinding style that they play where they slow it down a little bit. And again, I'll be the first one to tell you, I don't care what style of play you have. I really do not. You can win three to two. Thank I really you. don't care. If you <laughs> win, if you win, if you win, that's all that matters. I don't care how you get to that point. And, and now I, I understand the argument of you're going to recruit a certain style of player based on your style of play. So I could see that, you know, certain kinds of players wouldn't fit in, in, in that kind of style. And that you, you may not be able to go get, this or that, or you may be able to go get other kinds of guys, the the the, the different kinds of defenders and guys like you had last year uh, that can play your current style. So I can I can understand those arguments and all that, but the end game is the same, winning man, and that's what everybody here wanted to do. And and he said he said two things that I thought were interesting as it related to I think the current uh, the current guys. And you stop me, Callan, if you if you if you have this on audio, we can we can listen to it. But he said, you know, how do we know what is a good fit, you know, for for us here? And it was kind of on the 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 coattails of talking about like the current players. And he's like, How do you know that he was asked, how do you know what is a he's like, Well, and this goes along the lines with winning. If you're more worried about the points you scored in the game versus winning, this ain't the place for you. OK, if you're more worried about social media, more so than winning, this ain't the place for you. And I thought those were you, you, you should put those statements like in bold capital letters up there as far <laughs> yeah. as like because right under not, Dustin R. Womble Basketball Center. <laughs> put those quotes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think that right there sums up what he's about. You know, it sums up his style of play. It sums up kind of how it needs to be a, a we uh, type of deal. It sums up some of the issues that was with young kids in society today where, you know, they're just worried about, well, I didn't, I, you know, yeah, I, I scored 25 points and we lost, but man, I, I, I crushed it, boys. I got, I got all my highlights on the social media and all that stuff. I mean, you know, so I think this was anti that. So yeah. I, I, I like that, that one, uh, that one st stuck out to me big time, and I, I appreciated the sentiment. Yeah, uh, I would be in total agreement there. <laughs> uh, moving forward, some more from Coach McCaslin on things just like that. What is the criteria? What's the list? What's it looking like as far as the recruiting trail is concerned? And what goes into identifying uh, what he feels like would be a productive Red Raider? We'll get to that and Coach McCaslin coming up next. A Locked On Texas Tech. Thanks for joining us on Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network. Thanks for making us your first listen again on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts. Subscribe on YouTube if you haven't so far so you never miss an episode. Hearing from new Texas Tech men's basketball head coach, Grant McCaslin on the show today following his introductory press conference at United Supermarkets Arena yesterday. And some of what Chris was touching on just a second ago is what we'll get back into here to wrap up today's episode. Recruiting trail criteria. Pretty simple. And Coach McCaslin outlines what he and his staff are looking for when they go about identifying talent. Here is once again, Grant McCaslin. Obviously, you're going to look at measurables and talent. And I think those are the obvious my my uh, wife has told me that Michael Jordan's a really good player before. So I, I know she can recognize talent. But then there's the – I think there's a love for the game that you can't teach. And that's probably where we start. Because if you love basketball, then you're willing to do a lot of things to get better. And that takes conversations more than it takes what you can see. And I think you just have to do background work to do that. There's also a feel component, like really – Guys that can really play the game, can see it, know what other four players on the court are supposed to be doing with you, I think is really important. And if you can combine like a love for it and a feel for it, then you can 
I think the ceiling's limitless. I really do. And um, I think finding talent is going to be what's beautiful about being at Texas Tech is you can recruit the best talent in the world. Uh, but I think finding people that absolutely love basketball and have a good feel for the game can really – change the trajectory of their ability and so I think those two things are the most important yeah I mean there's some intangibles that he's mentioning there and that's where the the due diligence on and the background and that's what I was talking about like coach Brower right there like the the word I got was that oh yeah he he's uh he he can come to your practice and he can tell you like hey hey number this number that they don't practice hard enough. They, they probably couldn't play for us kinds of things. And so that's, that's why I think those guys could be in line to be assistant coaches because there's a trust there between the head coach and, and these guys and knowing what we're looking for. And it's, it's the, the intangible. Yeah. Yeah. You're six, eight, two twenty five. but do, do you, do you practice hard? Do you dog it? Do you, do you not really even want to do this? Is just the, this a means to an end? I mean, all, all that stuff, and so that they'll be able. Because I mean, the, their their point guard uh, th- this past year, the, the five foot eleven Dynamo there in, in North Texas, uh, Tyler Perry. I mean, you, you look at the measurables there, and you you go, you, you, there's plenty of reasons to look at him and go. I don't know if that's going to work here at this level, but yet you you dig in a little bit and it's it's the love of the game it's the intangibles it's it's all the other stuff and then he turns out to be the conference uh, usa player of the year uh probably headed to kansas state by the way so keep an eye on that one yeah uh, in the transfer portal now and uh i think a lot of people wanted to connect uh i know T yeah. dots i know and i think that you can <laughs> connect the i think those dots are unfortunately purple uh, but, uh, yeah, so, uh, which, which makes sense. Uh, there's a lot of ties, uh, with that. There's a coach on, on Kansas state staff ne- sitting next to Jerome Tang that is, uh, uh spent some time at, at, with Grant McCaslin at North Texas too, too. That makes some sense. Plus with what they did. K state has no history though, of producing talented players who are diminutive in stature. I mean, there's just no evidence they can do anything like that. So big mistake, Tyler, big mistake. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But yeah, I, I think, I think the intangibles of, of love of the game and, and working hard and cause I don't think kids get it. I'm just, it just makes me sound old. I, I guess I see it. I try to tell my kid this all the time. I just don't think he like grasp it yet. And like, they're just not mature enough to understand that. But when, when you do it at this level, like at the power five level, there is not many days off and like you have to have some self-motivation to, yeah, you're going to practice and you're going to do all the things that the team does, but there's a lot of extra stuff too, whether it's weight room or whether it's just going and getting, I mean, like, you know, I always say this free throws win and lose you games. You know how many free throws Davide Moretti when he was here, off to the side, nobody told him to do it. He just did it. He would make 100 a day, 100. Not not shoot them, but how many he made. And that's meticulous. That t- That's going to take you, you know, 30 extra minutes uh, as part of maybe what else you're doing. But there's just so many things that come with being really good at this level that I just don't think the general either fan or even sometimes player grasps like what it takes at this level to be really, really good. And, you know, and sometimes it, that even is not enough, you know. So I think you, you try to find yeah. kids that that fit into that mold, that want to be in there doing things seven days a week. And, you know, you don't have to, like, prod them to get them to play hard and, and all those things. So that, that makes your life as a coach that much easier, and that's what creates culture. Yeah, you certainly can't just pursue the accolades or the star rankings or whatever – uh, exclusively unto themselves. If you want to build a program that's going to uh, compete in the Big 12 Conference and compete in the NCAA tournament, and Chris, I don't know what really good basketball player that shows up on a college campus. Like, which one of them has not been a great scorer, like on the high school level or in a prep school or wherever they've been? They probably all got buckets for their individual teams, but they won't all be the primary bucket getter for their college team or whatever team. Uh, possibly is, is to come on the other side of that. So as soon as you are willing uh, to kind of humble yourself and understand that the game asks a hell of a lot more from successful players than just scoring, 
uh, the better off you're going to be. And whatever coach can convey that to a player or his family or his camp, which is a word I always love for a 17-year-old, you got a camp, uh, you're going to be successful, right? But you have to. We just talked about this the other day with like the NIL stuff. You don't want the NIL factor to be the most attractive quality of your program. You want your program, <laughs> your culture, your organization to be the most attractive quality. And, and if you can cash in on that in any way, then fine. But you want guys just to be a part of what you're doing because what you're doing is successful. We are in day one of this process, so we've got no proof of performance so far. It's all just still a vision. We haven't actually seen it play out just yet. But I hope a lot of what he has said this week about being very intentional with who they're bringing into this program is what we see play out because I'm absolutely with you on what you said earlier. I, I do not care about style points. I don't care what it looks like. Winning is the most beautiful thing of all. If it's three to two, that's fine with me. But if you're going to go that route, you got to get the right players. Or it could probably become a disaster uh, even more so quickly than just trying to orient it all around. Hey, we're going to score 125, play no defense, and all the flashiest players in America want to play for us. I mean, it's not going to go very well. So uh, we'll trust what he's saying right now is what we're going to see play out. But we've still got some time until we figure out whether or not it does. Uh, it is selling a vision at this time. But we know it's possible because it wasn't too long. We were there uh, just before. And you're talking about Davide and free throws. And I'm just thinking about all the games I'm walking away from this year thinking, hey, you know, maybe you make a handful more free throws. You might not have lost that game. <laughs> I mean, how many times is that? the difference it is an inch often that's going to determine whether or not you got a chance to play in a tournament or whether or not you're fishing for a new coach so good stuff chris uh, appreciate the time as always man and looking forward to some days uh here coming down the pipe where we'll have some clarity on some uh support staff and and obviously begin to learn some things as far as the roster as well so looking forward to that man enjoy it as always thanks for the time again Yes, sir. Keep hope alive and uh, stay out of the wind today, people. It's not going to be pleasant out there. <laughs> Although, as Grant McCaslin said, I wouldn't have you know, recognized this place otherwise. We lose many Yankees on a day like this in West <laughs> Texas, and that is truly a blessing from the Lord. So these come with great purpose. Let's make the most out of it. Yes. Or if you just need to exfoliate, step out on the front porch for five to ten minutes. The skincare routine in West Texas un. Parallel. That's why I hear Comanches had the greatest complexion of all native tribes. That's another episode. Don't fact check me on that because we've run out of time. For Chris Level, I'm Casey Cowan. Thanks for making us your first listen on Locked On Texas Tech. Check out Locked On College Basketball for your second and listen season recap now that the national title game is in the books on Locked On College Basketball right here on the Locked On Podcast Network for your second listen. We'll see you for the next round right back here tomorrow on Locked On Texas Tech.